Hello everyone, I have here the Lego Lion Knight's Castle. It's the 90th anniversary edition, came out in 2022, and I bought it for its retail price of $400 US, and then opened it and built the whole thing live in two long sessions over on my Twitch channel. This is made with 4,514 pieces, that's 4514, and includes 22 minifigures if you count the skeleton, which is a little bit debatable. But it is a full 3D build, so it is visible from all sides, does not have any camera unfriendly angles. It's fully closed up all the way around, and it's also able to be completely opened up. I'll be showing you all those views and the interior stuff as well. First wanted to just give you an idea of the, the full expanse of this in its normal form. I figure I'll start you at the entrance where there's a five stud wide ramp that takes you up. We'll just bring in many figures from time to time for the sake of scale to so see what you're looking at. Notice in the background here, this is a brand new color for the small tree, dark green, first time ever. Small little tree off to the side here. And the rock work behind does not use any big ugly rock pieces. It's all genuine full building with, with small pieces. You know, no, no shortcuts were taken with this. This is a very thorough and traditional, well, hybrid traditional and modern uh, build. So there's a lot of studs on top. Construction, there's a lot of studs on side construction. There's a lot of tricky stuff as well, more than you would expect. This is a nice little area that allows you to see through and gives almost a forced perspective kind of appearance, makes it look larger than it is because it really is, is not very large, but that takes you out to a space that effectively works as a moat where you've got a drawbridge that goes across the span there to act as a emergency security device. Really nice archways done in here. And all of the shields in this and all of the decorations that you'll see in this are done with uh, with prints and not with stickers. To operate the drawbridge, incidentally, there's a nice, fairly well hidden away or fa fairly well camouflaged mechanism. I mean, you can see it here, but it's done in gray. So, you know, it's, it's easy to get to and easy to operate but it doesn't stand out. It doesn't really, you know, look like something that's that's especially toyish. So it has that nice play feature to it, but it also remains displayable just, just fine. Nice arrow slits are used throughout this that have just barely enough room to imagine somebody shooting through. Um, this does have machicolations, which uh, don't actually work, unfortunately, here on the front. I think there's one spot on it that we'll, we'll see later on where those do work, but these are purely decorative. And again, more arch work that's done nicely with a combination of studs on top construction and studs on the side construction, both. I really like those small details. They're slightly different uh, treatments to this section that extends out. I am not a medieval medieval scholar, so I do not know the proper terms for all of these things. You'll have to forgive me for that. If you're looking for uh, encyclopedic knowledge about all that stuff, well, yeah, I'm, I'm not the one for you, I'm, I'm afraid. This is a printed flag up here. And there's one other thing that is a, an action feature, a, a usable feature here. Of course, you need to have the portcullis. And there it is now. <laughs> So that's actually operated from the top up here. And again, bringing in a minifig just for the sake of scale. So this has a, 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 a trigger mechanism that has a little bit of a rubber bushing there, but you just wind this up. This does get a little bit stuck on initial winding sometimes, but then it's very easy. It's like a ratchet, ratchet mechanism for an emergency drop of that if they're getting, uh, getting invaded. And you can see there's plenty of space around the top here to pose minifigs. So I can have multiple minifigs around at different stations, uh, you know, archers stations up there and also just look out. So good use of the, the small roof here. And I'll take us down this side further to look at this tree that's inspired by classic castle trees, of course, with the, the black color for the trunk, which works really well with old forestman stuff, including the forestman's hideout uh, uh, gift with purchase set. Got the beehive there, which is appropriately placed. This is nicely shaped and doesn't take up too much space. Also doesn't take up too many pieces. Underneath here, speaking of forestmen, they've hidden away a very nice little little, little hideaway, indeed. Uh, again, not using any big ugly rock pieces or any preformed large rock pieces. This is all genuine traditional Lego construction, but look at this. 
<laughs> it just rotates out and it's a little forestman's hideout right there with a bucket. You got the shield, the printed shield piece up on the wall and additional weapons in the form of the bow there and a sword off to the side. This space can comfortably hold one minifigure. You could kind of squeeze two in there, but I recommend having just one at, one at a maximum actually stored inside of there. But once this is open, there's another thing that you can access with this rock feature along the side here because this is a cracked rock face and potentially you could bust right through that with some work and so what they've done here is given us the ability to slide that off to the side and that gives you a way to break into the castle or rather to break out of the dungeon or the prison space down below i suppose if the cell is not locked it's a way that you could break in you know use your own imagination there but it's i think primarily intended to be used for escape now, instead of continuing around in the direction I was going there, I'm going to bring you back around to the front because I want to I want to cover the entire front face of this first in its default form. And then we'll get to the back and then we'll get to the insides. The front wall is not by any means straight. So when you look at the entrance gateway here, there's just a little bit of wall right here that is in line with that, that is on grid with that. And then there's a slight bend here. This comes out at a 90, 90, 90. And then we get a different bend here. So a different angle. And then this is 90, 90, 90, and then goes back to yet another angle. And this side, the side of this tower right here is not aligned with this at all. So everything is at different angles, which makes it a much more satisfying experience to build and also to look at, you know, it's not flat. Uh, it has some flat surfaces, but there's a lot of complexity here. There's a lot of nuance and putting that together is very, very satisfying. When you see some of the wedge plates that come together in the most perfect ways with no gaps whatsoever, it is fantastic, fantastic to see and feels just so good when you see it, when you, when you're doing the assembly and you're, you're getting stuff prepared, you're getting surfaces prepared and then you attach them and it's just Ah, it's so, so good. And I'm not going to try to spoil that for you too much here because, you know, if you're going to build this, you want to experience that nice and nice and fresh. Looking from on high here, we're looking down into the courtyard space, I guess it could be called because this is the, this is the main level. This is at the same level as the, the drawbridge out there. So this is the, the entrance level, even though there's a, a whole other minifig height worth of space down below this. But if I bring a minifig into this space, so you can see it for the sake of uh, of scale, you can have a number of figures going through here. Not too many, you can't make it too busy. But again, really nice work with the combination studs on top and studs on side. Doubled archway there to give you a little bit of depth and visual interest. Nice vine coming up the side. If you look at the floor, not too carefully, but if you look at it just a little bit, you can see some of the, the different angles that are coming together and those perfectly fitting wedge plates that I mentioned that have absolutely no gaps between them. There's a little market uh, vendor stall there. Uh, all of these littler things can easily be picked up and brought out. So if you look at the uh, the details on this, if it would focus, there we go. Uh, dark green is nice to get for that leaf piece there, but this is, this is nice and, and compact, but gives you some, some definite visual interest. And they also have some beverages that can be sold from here. And whether you have these things removed or on there it also works when they're on there this is a little trap door space here it's easiest to demonstrate this with the market stall in place because then i have a little bit of leverage and that just angles back to give a little bit of access to the lower level another potential escape route and then this is difficult to see just because of the steepness of the angle but there is access to an archer station right here a lookout station with just some narrow stairs so somebody can stand in that spot spinning us around continuing on the theme of access you got stairs up to the next higher level you've got a large doorway which has no door on it but an entrance way here to this space and there's also stairway access up from below or down to below through this little corridor here. It's nice to get some more visual contrast here with the white and black and also the thatched roof, which has a nice build. It's not too complex. It doesn't fully repeat, but you basically can see what they've done here with just a couple of pieces in two different 
earthy tones to represent the, the thatching. That actually works out nicely, but you know, it's not too bright because they did use these earthy tones. It's not too bright. It doesn't look too toyish. It makes it feel a little bit more real. This is obviously not intended to be fully historically accurate. <laughs> The whole thing is definitely a toy, but it's still nice to have all of these nods to reality and real features of medieval uh, structures. Uh, coming around here, we've got another tower, which is pretty narrow. We'll look at the insides of all of these things, but continuing with the, the theme of access, there's a uh, ladder back here, which allows a minifig to make their way up to the top. They can stand right here in the corner. We've got an arrow slit right there, and also a little bit of access just around the side here. Getting up to the top, there's actually a bell inside. It's a little bit going to be a little bit difficult to see right in there. There's there's a bell. Uh, there is no easy access for an in-universe minifig to make it up here, so we need to to just you know, I guess make somebody climb up on the roof or something to, to get to there. But most areas of the castle are set up well for minifig access. It's just the highest roof areas that don't always have ladders. This is a really nice angle to me. I like looking at the castle from here because you, you get to see the different colors over here and the different construction type, but you also just see some interesting, I don't know, just interesting shapes, just visually this, this makes me want to stare at it for a little while. I really like these here, the undersides of these archway pieces. The little overhang is nice and some vines. You also got the potted plants out along the, the side here, along the, the, the sills, I suppose. And this takes you all the way down to the waterway. So you also get some of the, the natural terrain down below. A little bit of rock work back here, which does not open up, but the the water mill actually does operate something. We'll see that on the inside. It is geared up to something, so we'll see that. The build of this is nice. It's a very genuine, again, Lego building experience. You put a bunch of small pieces together, and it's pretty brilliant how it's made, including with the, the open bushing here, which I, I think is I think it's pretty right. It's pretty realistic. They even have the water level right here being a little bit higher. So it suggests that water is flowing down. Don't see exactly where all that water is, how it's being channeled around, but it gives you the idea. And then there's a little bit of water spray down here with the little, little waves suggested with the clear cheese slopes. This little nook in here is very difficult to get access to. That's okay though. You don't need to, but as long as you're your hand is able to reach this knob right here. It's another action feature, another actuator back here. I'll show you what that does in just a moment, but uh, you can see some commonality to the, the some of the styling of this to a, 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 an extended area that we saw on the other side. These pieces right here are a little bit loose because it's a funky building technique that I've never seen before. We've got these pieces upside down and they're just captured in place. <laughs> which is really, really cool. Um, they're not going to fall out or anything. It's a completely legal building technique. It's just one of those things that, that you'll discover along the way uh, to be really interesting and, and surprising in a good way. There's more access around the back, but as you can see, this is presently blocked off. Well, that looks like a ladder to me, except in this case, it's, it's not. It's uh, an iron, like a wrought iron uh, gate. Nice stairs at an angle here, no studs on them, but having the stairs there is good regardless. And there's enough room for main figures to get their, their feet on it. And you know, you can, you can pose them along the way. Uh, maybe a little bit of a, of a dock, I think right here, more of, of course, the, the dark green trees along the way, but I want to show you how this access works and how this closes off. So that's with the, um, the knob back here. So this is actually on a geared mechanism. So when I turn that, there it goes slowly, slowly, and it opens up a wide area. You know, it's even wider than, than the stairs themselves to allow many figures to go through and the stairs continue towards the inside. Now this right here is the area that has the working uh, matriculations. So these have actual slots under there. And if, if an attack is attempted from back here, then the, the, the grating or the gate to the inside would be dropped and you can, whoops, you can drop like stones and things through these matriculation slots and there they go. I'll hit things down below roughly, or at least try. 
Here's how that looks from above. So there are the slots and they give you a little stack of one by one cylinders here to represent objects that would be dropped from above, most likely stones. This space has an armory, so plenty of weapons are stored around here. And you can pick this up. Nice mace there. Really good two-piece assembly for something that looks pretty realistic. There are additional clips along the, the walls and everything for for crossbow, crossbow bolts. There's an extra helmet in there on a stand which can be removed. Some extra shields, some of those have prints on them, some of them do not. And over on this side here, there's another rack with the bow and arrow and quiver there and a couple more clips to put other minifigs' weapons and accessories on. From here, you can also see the chains that are used to suspend the portcullis, so there's that and also the draw bridge. So you can see that going down and coming up. And if I wind this up fully, like I said, there's one spot where it gets stuck. And then when you drop it, see, you know, by default, all of that is partially hidden behind one of these racks. Up here, I should also mention, this is another small roof area that many things do not have direct access to get to. So you have to use your imagination to place them there magically. Now on that note, it is time for me to start opening this up. So I'm just going to do so. It actually locks itself in place just a little bit, but it takes just a little bit of force and remembering where the joints are, where the separation points are to get used to the process of opening it up, especially again, since the, the angles are not quite as, as obvious as usual for Lego things. So see, all this opens up and completely changes the appearance and the feel of it from the back. But if I also turn it around, see, there's a completely different feeling from the front. Now this feels so expansive. And if you want to have this on display and get the biggest bang for your buck, just on display with it up against a wall or something, this is the way to do it. The only problem with that is that because everything is angled in, it needs a lot of depth. You need a, a deep shelf to, to fit all of this on. At least 12 and a half inches or 32 centimeters. I think it still looks great though, and possibly even more classic, more like a classic Lego castle, because honestly, the depth of this and the thickness and density of this is so far beyond the classic style by default when it's all closed up that it almost feels like it's not that much of a throwback of, of a 90th anniversary throwback and more a purely new thing. This to me honestly feels more like Lego, feels more like a playset, and it, it's just a little bit more toyish in the best way possible. It makes me smile a little bit more. And check out this cove that's formed when this side is folded in. Before, everything over there was on the other side entirely, but now it's all together and it connects, and they've even got the commonality of the black used to represent the wood for the dock here, which now totally makes sense up against the black uh, bark of of the tree of the traditional tree from before they had a ton of uh, uh, brown colored parts in the first part speaking of brown colored parts there's also a little brown frog over here on the ground we'll have to see what that's about in a minute from this side now i can show you the lower level so this here is the entrance level where the drawbridge is right there on the other side of the portcullis but let's come down here that is a basement or cellar. So this over here is a drum. You got a chest and maybe a cowbell. There's also a golden chalice back there. And inside the treasure chest are some printed gold coins with the monarchy's uh, crown on the top and just a couple of pieces that represent gems. And over here is a silver goblet. And that bucket has a couple of black colored wand pieces like Harry Potter style wands. Uh, you can just barely see them there that represent drumsticks to use with the drum that's off to the side. Here's your access to get down there or to get up from there. And here's another one of these racks with clips on it and additional pieces to armor up some of your knights. Meanwhile, this is the side entrance where there's the, the drop down uh, gate that's operated from the knob on the side. And up here is another very useful room it's the restroom, the bathroom. We frequently complain about Lego not including restrooms in houses and other major structures. Well, they have included one here and it's effectively a machicolation with a seat on it. So it's open on the other side, which is appropriate and accurate. They actually have toilet paper there, which is not appropriate and accurate, but to give you that historical accuracy that we all absolutely need out of our toys, they also include a stick with a, uh, with a leaf on it. 
for cleaning yourself. You know, there was great hygiene back in the medieval days. Now, this is what that looks like again from the outside. So there's a hole down here and that may explain what's going on with this. Moving right along then, we've already looked at this space here when everything was closed up. So down here, I'm gonna lift the portcullis. You can see straight through there, plenty of walking space here. Also have access to the ladder shaft to get up to the next level. Uh, another clip over here, optionally, you could put a minifig accessory there. And this space has a little gate in front of it because you can put a horse in there. It's the single stable for the, the royal steed. Below all that is the dungeon level. And we've already seen how there's the escape action or break in action from the the forest person's hideout little area, not from the separate set, but the one that's built into this from the outside. That goes over here. And then this side, which has the skeleton in there presently, has access to the area beneath the courtyard where I had the market stall that was able to lift up a secret panel. So you can either break in or break out there. To see more about how that is connected, I'm gonna separate the two segments of the castle because they are just clipped together and there you can see how this is all wide open see there's a whole cave system under there and obviously it's kind of dark because it's a cave system but if i try to shine some light in you can see that there are a couple of bats hanging from the ceiling the water ends and it kind of comes ashore and around to one side here the side that has the uh, the detention cell down there if i stick my hand in through the cell there's a little window. So you can pop that window open and somebody, somebody very, very small could uh, get, their self, get themselves through there or possibly some goods could be passed through there as contraband. On the other side, meanwhile, look at all of this. It turns out the, uh, the forestman's hideout is much more expansive than, than we thought because it goes, Remember, from underneath the moat on the other side, that cave system extends all the way to here. And then they've, I mean, they're set up. They got furniture down here. They got food. They got weaponry. They've got target practice set up there. Maybe a dartboard is what that's intended to represent. And then this is a, this is a ladder. It's a full on ladder. Look, that ladder goes up to this bypass here. They're fully set up to raid the inside of the castle of supplies <laughs> to go in and out as they please, in addition to accessing the dungeon. So they're just all over the place. They got, they got a great setup here. All right, the next space over here is the kitchen. So they've got a large oven back there, uh, enough space for a pan. And you can also put a, a whole turkey back inside of there. And then you got ingredients and things, you know, uh, uh, some some bakery goods up on the wall. I actually really like this wall over here because it shows like, I don't know, parsnips and some other greens and things that are hanging up. It just, it feels very right for the theme. I also have access to the next level up there. That's where the stairway comes down from above. But it's, it's just a really nice setup with still, once again, plenty of space for figures to be posed walking around and, and you know, doing whatever it is that they're interested in doing down there, whether it's hanging out or making the food or eating some of the food. Next level up uh, is, I don't know exactly what this room would would represent, but they've got a harpsichord off in the corner, which is a very small build with a short keyboard on it, but it looks pretty good. And you put it, there's just enough space for it there. And also you can get a little bit of heat from a bit of fireplace here with also an extra log for firewood. And then up above that is like a kid's room, at least on this side, it's like a kid's room. Because remember all of this, this whole section that I'm looking at here also itself folds. I'll, I'll get into, how it folds and why it folds in a minute. But this is a small model of the original yellow castle from Lego. So a very nice full throwback there. And there's a, a doorway here, which is super, super narrow. You can see it's a, it's a two stud wide door, but brick or plate built. And it's just enough, it's just uh, wide enough for a minifigure to slip through sideways, only just in the, uh, the stairway comes up the spiral half quarter spiral stairway comes up here and there's enough room for somebody to walk across the top and this archway becomes complete when this whole thing is folded in this way archway becomes complete you see the, the water which previously would go from here down to here well 
now it's not doing that. And it just gives you better access to, to see the water wheel itself. And then you can also see on this side what the water wheel is doing, what it's powering. It's powering the mill. So flour is being ground there. It's a very simple mechanism, but it works very well. It's all nicely located in there. It's nice and smooth. And it feels very realistic to me for a couple of reasons. First of all, the flower is spilling out the corners and the edges. There's just a tiny little gap on the edge and you can just feel that that's a natural occurrence that the flower is, you know, it's, it's gonna do that. It's gonna go where it wants to go. Any, anywhere that it can overflow the edges and, and corners and things. You've got a sack of flour over here that's been bagged up and you've got the feed mechanism here. I really, really like the feed mechanism, especially this spout leading down to the, the stone. It, uh, it's, it's at an angle. It's like diagonal building. It's just, it's really, really good. I like it maybe a little bit too much. Over here, uh, storeroom, they've got just a, a baguette there and there's a, a nest up above, like a, a bird's nest. And then this is the dining space with some nice decorative shields up there. This does feel a little bit on the narrow side, but of course this room when closed up is combined with this. So those two become part of one, just like this is part of this over here. So you've got all the food preparation and storage when it's closed all together. But when it's open, you can explore them as separate spaces. This has room for only two figures to sit there at the dining room table. It's really nice. You know, it's very ornate and everything. Uh, I even like the legs. They've got little scrolly bits on them. But there's not a whole lot that you can do in, in this space. I would would have preferred to have more room to accommodate more people together. And then finally, let me, uh, well, here you can see a little bit of the decoration in the background, but let me move up. And this is the monarch's bedroom here. So bed is kind of small, kind of narrow, and you know, really barely wide enough for a minifigure to just barely be posed there. So that definitely could have been better for the sake of play and for the sake of integrating figures into the space. Also, no studs right here. So that makes it a little bit more difficult to pose figures. I think just one stud in one spot would have been good to allow you to have a figure facing absolutely any direction. And off to the right there is another fireplace with some more firewood off to the side to keep everything warm. And again, keep in mind that this room is, when everything's combined, the same room as this. So the, the I'm assuming the child of the monarch would uh, be using this part of this house of sorts. Now there's one other thing that I've intentionally been keeping from you. So there's this ladder to get access to a lookout point and, and archer's position right there. And then there's this bridge or this uh, banister of sorts. You can see that it has a couple of extra uh, bending points in it, a couple of extra hinges that don't line up with the hinge in the main building itself. Now look what happens when this closes up, when I close the whole thing together, see it's bending in a couple different places and it's also shifting out, it's extending out in order to make up the space. So here it is from the other side. It breaks in three places to rotate around. Look at that. And then when it all forms together and it becomes fairly, fairly boxy. It's just a little bit off here, but shift it just to the side and you know you pretty much have 90 degree 90 degree 90 degree angles all around when that happens though when this section here slides out that needed that extra space see it's pushing back into the building now when that slides out it's actually revealing a little bit of access here if i move this ladder out of the way it's revealing access to something extra a hidden golden frog on the inside right there. You wouldn't see it if you didn't do this. <laughs> see, you, it's just, it's just all fully integrated in, but there's just that little bit of corner maybe to suggest that something could be inside. And indeed golden frog, cause you know, Lego and their whole frogs thing. It's a kind of designer in joke that they use on a regular basis. And I like it. I just, I just like the, the extra completely unnecessary, but really clever mechanism and fun surprise. Other than the minifigures, these are the things that remain. Three large animals plus one cart. 
The cart is ox drawn. It is not an exclusive cow. And the build of the cart is pretty clever. I like how the hay that's inside of there, which I'm assuming would be to supply the stable for the, uh, the, the royal steed, is angled around the sides. And these flag bits just fold right up to there. You've also got the bird, which can be transported in to be the to represent the same bird that uses the nest in the storeroom and i also wanted to point out one other very important thing here unfortunately there's quite a bit of color variation between these blue pieces now some folks would like to say that well that actually makes it better makes it more realistic makes it look more weathered and medieval you know i completely completely soundly reject that sort of apologism for lego this very 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 premium very expensive plastic product being inconsistent they need to do better than that we should never see coloring consistencies like that from lego ever it's actually surprising how infrequently we get horses from lego well cows as well but this is a, a very nice looking horse in dark orange uh, we get plenty of them in the the friends line but not so much in the minifig compatible lines but the printing here is beautiful it's it's very classic inspired but also very modern with its precision that is an actual metallic gold print that's on there gives you a little bit of shine could have been a little bit shinier but i'm not going to complain about that because it actually looks very nice and they do for each of the animals include the extra pieces necessary so if you want to remove the extra stuff and just have the animal by itself use this to fill in the hole there they have the same thing for the ox and they have the same thing for one other horse included in the set which is from a visiting party from the now at least temporarily allied black falcon knights and this is another really good looking horse and the printing on here is really good i think that there's a slight bit of misalignment where the two prints overlap at the front but it's not too bad just generally this is a good looking one once again and i'm happy that these exist and they still have the same articulation that they have for quite some time with the neck being able to go up and down and you're also able to get them to to rear up like so also included is this cute little lamb, which is also not exclusive to the castle, but was just introduced in 2022. I'm going to go through the minifigures out of order here, but also fairly quickly because most of my viewers are more interested in builds and less so in the figures themselves. And of course, if you really want to stare at figure details for a long time, it's better to look at photographs rather than uh, videos like this. But this is the full Forestman uh, family yes there's an entire family including the brand new uh, the representation of a, of a toy or action figure here the brand new dark brown recolor for a nano fig to represent you know just a, a whittled uh, uh toy figure got the loot there like these are these are really nice for what they are and i really appreciate that they're able to use the same torsos for all of them so you can pop and swap and you know expand this mix them with the uh, some of the figures that come with the gift with purchase and everything not gonna lie the wizard of the court let me down a little bit just it's lacking detail could have had some print for the lower leg piece which is nice uh, and very appropriate i think you know it's much better than the old taller uh, slope piece that did not connect to torsos very well this makes it the same height as a regular figure but just really couldn't use some more print on there and then just a couple of the workers from around the place there to the side they look good they look nice and diverse and interesting you know interesting looking characters interesting uh, facial expressions the wizard is in fact santa claus canonically proven there but only one of these has an alternate face it's the one in the middle here's another castle grounds worker on the left in the middle is the royal child the prince who would be assembling the classic yellow castle got print on the arm for that one it's nice to see and on the right is our first knight there will be many of those and most of them share the exact same uh, leg prints and torso print as well so here you can see it fairly clearly without anything else in the way and that knight also has an alternate face so she can be sleeping a really good detail really nice design for that torso 
I, th I think that's done pretty well. However, I'm not completely satisfied with the printing for the legs because the red definitely should have been more opaque, should have been brighter. You know, you can see the, the bright color going through the hip piece, which is a, a printed plastic piece that is red underneath. And yeah, it's just a little bit too much contrast. Here are more knights with more different configurations. Again, all with the same leg pieces between them, all with the same torsos between them, just different configurations of weapons and armor. They did give us all of the different types of, uh, of helmets for knights, which is great. And you have extras as well of different things to fully suit these up in different ways based on what's in the armory. And you need to take these off to make sure that you can see the alternate faces such as they exist. And there's the other one, as well as the main face print for that character on the far right. That's a, a, a very strong, happy face, a very genuine happy face. And there are those. Lion Knights continue, very strong print for the shield. That looks good. It's unfortunate that we don't have a silver colored modern motorcycle helmet piece to get this pointed visor piece to, to match. I think that would have been fantastic. I think that would have looked just so much better than leaving it at, at the plain gray. But, you know, at least we do get the visor piece again in that silver color. Once again, these are all using the exact same torso prints. Uh, this one's got that face either because he ate something that's not good. And maybe you would pose that figure uh, up at the uh, the restroom machiculations or uh, could be blowing a horn. You know, it could be a herald. And underneath there are the rest of the faces. So you can see them a little bit more clearly. And all of these have alternate faces as well. That's good. And then here are the two dedicated archers, at least as they're set up out of the box. Of course, you can change people around however you want. It is Lego. And on the left is the queen, fully set up with the exclusive print, beautiful print for the cape there. Unfortunately, once again, using just a plain gray piece, gray motorcycle helmet piece. Uh, underneath, but she gets the golden colored visor with a very, very obvious nub mark there, the, the mold point where it, it, it broke off from the excess material. It's unfortunate that it's right there front and center because you can see it and it's just yeah, not ideal, but still nice to get it in gold. And I will take some stuff off so you can see more details. And there you can see some of the faces clearly and the exclusive royal garb over here, which looks really nice. And notice there are no waistlines on it. There are no waistlines on any of these. Thus, they are gender neutral. And if you wanted to have this castle have a king instead of a queen, or you want to have both, just do some some swaps, you know, swap out the headpiece. It's it's so simple and it's done right. That's exactly what I want to see from Lego. Minimize the use of uh, unnecessarily restrictive parts and designs so that we can use Lego as Lego and swap things around, do customizations, you know, come up with our own stories. This is great. You know, provide us the parts, provide diverse parts like they've done here and uh, let us, yeah, let us take it from there. Absolutely perfect really good design work and production work as well on this exclusive torso here. I do wish that the legs here were dual molded though. If they were red on top and then the design on the front was extended down to the normal point where the, the transition occurs between the two colors in a dual molded leg set, then you wouldn't have had this awkward looking side. It's just a little bit too plain, almost looks like the person is wearing like a bathing suit or something. And then leggings, I don't know, just from, just from the side, it looks a little bit awkward. So I think that could have been improved ever so slightly. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with what's here. And finally, here's a party of visiting, again, allied or at least under truce Black Falcon Knights with uh, a male figure, a female figure, and then a lackey figure. Probable uh, Monty Python reference is highly, highly probable with this one over here. Nothing official, of course, but once again, shared leg pieces and, and designs between them. The arms and legs are gunmetal gray, shared torso pieces between them and, and designs there. Only one of the Black Falcon Knight's shields is included. Uh, black longsword over here, uh, silver broadsword in the middle, couple of banners, two different types or designs of helmets in the black color, black feather plume here, which is just the, the modern standard type, but still we haven't had black feather uh, plumes, black colored in quite a long time. And looking underneath, I'm not gonna take all of that stuff off because <laughs> there's a lot there. This one has an alternate face 
And this one does as well, just to show that he's either scared by something or just completely overworked. Leftover parts are many, and it's quite possible that the swords and bolts should have been attached to some of the additional clips that are available around the castle. But one thing that I did miss during the minifig discussion was that we have this as an extra pair of pieces as well. So you got the crown and the hairpiece for the queen. Here's what she looks like with that on. And that is definitely a spot where we have a miss from Lego in that we don't have the option of giving a crown to a male character in this set. They just, they just don't have a hairpiece that has a, a hole in it to, to hold that or alternately a, a separate crown piece. Well, given the sheer amount of time that it took me to do the raw recordings of the narrative tour of this set, it's surely going to be one of my longest ever edited videos, period, of any type ever in my life. And that's a bit of an indication of just how much stuff is here, because I surely missed some little things along the way accidentally and definitely skipped over a whole lot of obvious little, you know, little random stuff. You know, uh, most of my audience is is adults and they don't need every single stud to be described narratively. So you know, I, I tried not to to spend too much time describing things that are absolutely obvious. But, yeah, just that sheer amount of descriptive time as it as it is says something about how much you get with this set. Now, again, it's $400 US, it's 400 euros as the base price in Germany, and it varies from there, different places in the Eurozone, and it's 345 pounds UK. Do I think it's worth that? Mm. Frankly, I would prefer that this be between 300 and, uh, 320 in 2022, between 320 and 350. That's about where I'm at, US or Euros. 320 to 350. 400 definitely feels like too much to me, but I am not biased in favor of this because of its or due to its theme and the fact that it's a 90th anniversary call back to classic castle because i was never into classic castle so i'm looking at this a little bit as an outsider as very much a lego fan as someone who was very much around during the days of classic the, the heydays of classic castle and who spent many many hours looking at those little miniature catalogs including looking at the uh, some of the early like second generation post yellow castle era uh, castle stuff and just just imagining being there and imagining the knights and what they're doing and all that stuff so you know, i definitely have some nostalgia for this type of stuff but i personally prefer town city and space you know stuff so i can definitely understand folks who are are very nostalgic towards medieval lego sets in particular looking at this saying 400 dollars okay take my money you know, I, I, I can get that. I don't think that this should be priced at $400, but I don't think you're getting completely ripped off. If you want it, you've seen it, you're still interested in it after seeing what's inside and what the price is, I, I think you'll be okay. Because again, the build experience is something that's intangibly great about this. I can say that even as someone who doesn't have the nostalgia for, for Medieval Castle. It adds a lot more beyond just what you can see through pictures and, and videos. So all in all, this is definitely a success of a set. It is a triumph of design. Comes with a lot of figures, has not too many quirks, not too many things that I would prefer to see done better. Definitely, it should have come with a crown, in my personal opinion, a, a crown that would work for a swap over to a king or they should have had a, a side set available simultaneously on the market to let you get a king right now rather than having to you know go to Bricklink or have already collected something from years ago on your own. But otherwise, yeah, really, really nice stuff. And uh, yeah, they, they did it. They did it not only as well as they needed to, but way better than they needed to with the, <laughs> the hidden features and all the angles. Some of the realistic stuff, unnecessarily realistic stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a really good set. I'm very happy with it. And I'm happy to have been able to spend this time 
going through it and sharing it with all of you. Hope that this was a useful video to you, even though it was crazy, crazy long. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.